Reverend Coleman is muted. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just we'll wait for him to start. Mm -hmm. Savior, 
so sweet. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I know. Hallelujah. 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 Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Carter Community AME Church family, our Facebook friends and visitors. We want to go before our gracious God in prayer this morning. We enter into the gates, hallelujah, with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And we go before the only, hallelujah, true and living God. We've come this morning to praise, to pray, and to worship God. Let us go before him in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are the only God. You are Lord, you are sovereign. You are our soon and coming King. Lord, we just wanna say thank you this morning for life itself. Thank you this morning for a mind to pray. Thank you this morning for a mind, Lord God, to exalt you, Lord God. You are worthy of all the honor, adoration, and praise. We come to you, Lord God, because you welcome us in any time of the day or evening. You are a God that never slumbers nor sleeps. So we come, Lord God, this morning collaboratively, Lord God, Carter Community, AME Church. Lord Jesus, we welcome in all of our visitors, Lord God, into your presence. And we lift up the name of Jesus because it is the only name that truly matters, especially in the time that we're living in today. So we just say thank you, good morning, we love you, we appreciate you, we adore you, we bow down in humble submission to you. We humble ourselves this morning in prayer to you. We lift up your name in praise and we come, Lord God, to worship. Father God, before we ask for anything, we wanna just praise you and worship you and ask for forgiveness of all of our sins that we have committed by thought, word, or deed against your divine majesty. Forgive us, O Lord God, and help us not to repeat those same old hallelujah, Lord God, activities and habits and conduct and speech again. That's all offensive to you, Lord God, and even maybe harmful to ourselves and to others. Forgive us and we thank you because we know when we ask for forgiveness that you are just and faithful to forgive. But Lord God, we have petitions, Lord God, on our hearts that we wanna present to you this morning. You told us to come Come. those that are burdened down, those that are lost, confused, Lord God, those that are hungry and homeless, those, Lord God, that don't have hope. Father God, we bring those petitions to you, those that are mourning the loss of loved ones today, Lord God. It's been a rough 2020, and as we're coming into 2021, the second uh, year of the second month of the year, Lord God, some things have changed, but some things have remained the same and even gotten worse for some of your people. So Father God, I hold them up to you now. You know what they stand in need of, Lord God. You know those that are hungry and homeless. Lord God, we ask for provision for them. We ask for permanent housing. Lord God, we ask for suitable clothing. Here it's snowing in New York. I don't know what it's doing around the world, but it's cold, Lord God and someone needs hallelujah someone needs hallelujah proper clothing oh heavenly father someone needs a job millions of people are unemployed lord god we ask you lord jesus even in spite of not having employment lord god the cattle on a thousand hills belong to you so we trust you lord god for the meal we trust you lord god hallelujah for shelter we trust you lord god for clothing we trust you for lifting up our heads you said that you would lift up our head oh ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory you said that you'd come in lord god you'd come in and sit with us and sup with us and dine with us lord god and we thank you lord god because you are a promise keeper lord god we ask you heavenly father to look over this nation heavenly father we thank you for a new administration but we need you lord god more than ever we need protection and strength lord god for this administration lord god for president biden and vice Kam president kamala lord god we ask you to strengthen them, put a hedge of protection around them. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come nigh them, their household, or their families. We ask you, Lord God, hallelujah, to look over and regulate, Lord God, what's going on even in the Senate, Lord God, in the Congress, Lord God, in the Supreme Court. Be there, Lord God, hallelujah. Stay the hand of the enemy, oh Lord God. Hallelujah. You said many are the plans, Lord God, of men and women, but it will be your purpose that shall prevail. Lord God, it will be established. Establish it, Lord God, in this government of 
of America. Establish it in our states, in our cities, in our communities. Establish it, Lord God, in our churches, in the body of Christ. Lord God, we'll give you all the honor and praise. But right now, Lord God, as a man of God, Lord, hallelujah, uh, Dr. Kevin, Lord God, Pastor Kevin D. Miller, Lord God, breaks the bread of life and feeds us on this first Sunday, Lord God. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear and to receive what you have prepared for your people, Lord God. We are hungry for you. We are passing after you like a deer panteth after water. We want to be fed today. We are thirsty for you and only you today for your truth, Lord God. So Father, we turn this service over to you. We turn, Lord God, every hand, Lord God, that participates in this service over to you. We submit our will to your will and our way to your way and say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Heavenly Father. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray and we'll continue to give you glory and honor all week long for what you are doing right now in this space. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Love 
Absalom Jones is one of the most inspiring figures in the history of the Episcopal Church. He is the first African-American Episcopal priest, and today we celebrate his Saints' Day. Absalom Jones was a forerunner of what it means to live into the promise of becoming beloved community. His leadership embodied the values of what it means to be a beloved community where every person is a child of God, a beloved child of God. Absalom Jones was born in 1746 in Delaware into a situation where he and his family were enslaved. When his owner moved to Pennsylvania, to Philadelphia, the family was broken up and Absalom Jones went with the owner. While there, he was able to earn a living in a bookstore and eventually he was freed by his owner. And shortly thereafter, when he was married, he was able to purchase his wife's freedom from her owner. Absalom Jones became very involved in an Episcopal church in Philadelphia called St. George's. And as he and his friend Richard Allen began to build up through their evangelistic efforts, the presence and membership of the African American community in that congregation, the congregation got nervous. And eventually, there was a division and a split, and Absalom Jones and his friend Richard Allen began their own congregation and split off from St. George's and formed St. Thomas's Episcopal Church. Not long after that, there was a split between Absalom Jones and Richard Allen, and Richard Allen went on to found the African Methodist Episcopal Church and become a priest in that denomination, whereas Absalom Jones was made a priest in 1802 by William White, the Bishop of Philadelphia. St. Thomas's congregation grew at a rapid rate, and there were over 500 members in a few short years under his leadership. Absalom Jones continues to this day to lift up and inspire by his witness, by his leadership, and by his deep commitment to becoming beloved community. What it means to be a leader in the church. Praise God, praise God, and praise God again. To God be the glory for the great things God has done, the great things God is doing, and the great things God is about to do. We bless the name of the Lord just because God is worthy to be praised. Beloved, we give God praise for you today, and we thank God that you thought enough of God and of us to be a part of the Carter Community Worship Experience. I am the Reverend Dr. Kevin D. Miller, and I have the wonderful blessing of serving as the pastor of the Carter Community AME Church, located physically in Jamaica, New York, but right now we can be seen all around the world. And as Reverend Greta mentioned earlier today, it is snowing in New York, but we give God praise because we still are in a place and in a posture of worship but I do want to encourage you to stay safe wherever you may be. Let me also thank so many of you who joined the worship experience on Friday night as we had a chance to be a part of a six hour worship, prayer and praise experience with St. John AME Church. I just want to say thank you. 
your pastor was preaching at 1130 in the evening and you were there to be in a place of support. So I want to thank you. Thank you for staying up on a Friday night so that you can be a part of this prayer and praise experience. Let me share just a few more announcements with you as we continue in our worship experience. Today, we will celebrate Christ with the Holy Communion. So I want to invite you to get your communion elements. I was a blessing yesterday to see so many of you as you came to pick up your communion and communion is, is prepared and ready. So uh, today, towards the end of the service, have your communion elements ready as we celebrate the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. We also want to encourage you to join us for Bible study each week and certainly to stay in God's word. You see the scriptures there and you can come to our website, uh, to our Facebook page actually each and every day to see the scripture for that day. For those who are listening on the prayer line, we invite you to stay around for a while after service today and we'll be able to give you all of this information. But I just invite you to be a part of Bible study and I invite you certainly to, to, to continue to stay in God's word. Beloved, there are a stream of announcements here and I'm so excited because it just shows that God is doing great things in us and through us. This Tuesday, we invite you to come to conversations with a, with a pastor that you can view right here on this Facebook platform. Our guest is the Reverend Dr. Mark Kelly Tyler. This is the second installment of my interview with him, and it is especially purposed for Black History Month. You saw and heard just a few moments ago, the Black History Spotlight. Well, that's something we hope to do each week during Black History Month. You heard about Absalom Jones, who walked out of St. George's Methodist Church with the founder of the AME tradition, Bishop Richard Allen. Well, Dr. Tyler is going to talk a lot about that. This is an amazing, amazing installment about the history and the formation of the AME Church. So I invite you, I encourage you, you do not want to miss this one. You will learn more about this tradition. So please, Tuesday, 630, be right here in this virtual space to hear what thus saith the Lord. Beloved, during this season, we want to try to find other ways to gather. So we are just excited about this initiative that we're going to do. What we're going to call Black Artist Week. So next Sunday, next Sunday, February 14th at 5 o'clock, we invite you to call in on the prayer line. Or we invite you to come to the Zoom information that you see on your screen and that you see in the chat. And we're just going to have a chance just to hear a, a little bit of comedy uh, and hear some music. Uh, celebrating the ministry of Bishop Paul Morton. So we invite you to come in and watch and view and listen and laugh just a little bit. So next Sunday, five o'clock, we're going to be here. Come to the virtual space. This will not be on our Facebook page. You must come to the virtual space in our Zoom room, or you must dial in on the prayer line. But we invite you just to be a part of a time of gathering and fun and laughter. And then a week from Friday, you all know that just recently, Cicely Tyson passed away. But we're going to gather again in our virtual Zoom room and have a chance to watch the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. One of the stellar performances that Sister Tyson, Cicely Tyson has done in her career. So we invite you to join us next Friday as well. So next Sunday, next Friday, it's going to be a great time in the Lord. Come on and spend some time with us. This Thursday, starting at 8.31 in the morning, will be the AME Founders Day celebration. So we want to invite you to be a part of that. This Thursday, go to the First District website, First District uh, AME Church. You can go to their website, and on that website, we'll have the information for you to be a part of the Founders Day celebration. It starts at 8.30 in the morning and goes throughout the day. So if you can't be there for the entire thing, come in and out. I'm sure there'll be some information that will bless your soul. This Saturday, we invite you to reimagine ministry as the Department of Christian Education for the First Episcopal District has this wonderful, wonderful opportunity as we present uh, some of the, the, the work that our young people have done. So you see the information on your screen. We invite you again to go to the First District 
AME Church website, and you'll be able to get this information, be a part of the celebration this Saturday between 9 a.m. and 1030. We are on the verge of entering into the Lenten season. I'll share this information again next week, but the Jamaica Long Island District, the district that Carter Community is a part of, we will, be, we will come together virtually for a joint Ash Wednesday service. And we thank God even now for our sister and our colleague, the Reverend Dr. Evelyn Miller-Suber. We see the information there. We invite you, we invite you to be a part of this worship experience as we start the Lenten season. And beloved, as we start the Lenten season, look, these are different times and we need to see God's face. We need to see God's face in prayer and we need to see God's face in fasting. I want to invite you to join with me as we go through this Lenten season to join with me in a Daniel fast. Essentially, when you look at the word of God and you see the scriptures there on your screen, when you look at the word of God, the Bible talks about how Daniel, how the prophet Daniel was, was in this place and he went and began to fast and decided he wasn't going to eat any good food, meaning over these next, uh, over this Lenten season, no meat, no dairy, no fried chicken. No macaroni and cheese. Look, we're going to seek God's face together. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. I'll talk about it for a bit in Bible study this week as we've been focusing on prayer. But I'll take time to talk more about the Lenten season. I will also, if the church has your email address, I will email you the parameters as it relates to the Daniel fast so that you have that in front of you. But essentially, all we will be eating over this season will be fruits and vegetables, seeking God's face together. So won't you join with me? Will you come for an amazing ride? God will bless our sacrifice. Beloved, as we get ready to receive tithes and offerings, I just want to thank God for each and every one of you. Because of your faithfulness, we're able to continue the work of the ministry. I give God praise for you. You have been faithful to your relationship with God. And through that, you have blessed Carter community. And because we are blessed, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. So I want to thank you, beloved. Thank you for your, for your faithful support to the ministry. There are four ways to give to the ministry. You can give uh, either through Zelle or PayPal. And you can search Carter Community AME at gmail.com. Again, either Zelle or PayPal, Carter Community AME at gmail.com. Or you can download and use the Givelify app. If you use the Givelify app, you can search Carter Community AME Church. And then finally, you can mail your gift. You can mail your gift to Carter Community AME Church, 112 25, 167th Street in Jamaica, New York. The zip code is 11433. To God be the glory. Receive this prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift and for the giver. We thank you, God, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. Bless now, I pray, those who are giving. Bless God, those who have a desire to give but are unable to for one reason or another at this time. God, in fact, just bless everyone underneath the sound of my voice. God, you are truly truly worthy to be praised. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Wherever you may be, let us together say amen. Beloved, as Minister Tanisha Lawrence prepares to read our scripture today, which will come out of the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 1 through 10, I do want to uh, just take a moment to thank our social media ministry. Thank you for all that you are doing there making this come alive each and every week. And I thank God for their service to God and their service to the ministry, putting together the Black History Spotlight, developing the graphics that you see. I just want to say once again, thank you for what you are doing. Thank you to the music ministry for your faithfulness. Thank you to the ministers. Thank you to the officers. Thank you to everybody who's watching on Facebook that engages each and every week and puts information into the chat. It is a blessing 
to be in this place of engagement. Every week I go and I look and I just give God praise for each and every one of you. So I didn't want to go a step further without just saying thank you because some of this stuff came together late in the week instead of early in the week. So we give God praise because God has made it come together. Right now, Minister Lawrence is going to read our scripture lesson and coming out of the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 1 through 10, and following a somatic selection by the Reverend Emmanuel Coleman. If you're praying with me and for me as I'm praying with you and for you, I know that there is a word from God. Good morning, Minister Lawrence. Good morning, Pastor. And we thank God for you for being a great leader, visionary, and shepherd, not only in this time, but in uh, all of your time over Carter Community. We thank God for you. Our scripture reading comes from Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 10. And I will be reading from the New International Version of Scripture. The word of the Lord reads as follows. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. I'm just going to repeat verses um, oh, sorry, verse 10. I'm going to repeat verse 9 and go to verse 10. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you would once again stand with me and strengthen me, that your message would be preached fully through me, that all would hear. Amen. Historical book of Numbers, 14th chapter, 9th verse, these words. Only do not rebel against the Lord nor fear the people in the land, for they are bread to us. Their protection is no longer with them. The Lord is with us. Do not be afraid. For a time today, beloved, I'm compelled to speak to this sermon title, There Are Still Giants in the Land. The book of Numbers is an interesting book, and I know that some of you are familiar with this part of the text, but allow me just to get and make sure that everybody is caught up, because the book of Numbers tells the story of how Moses conducted a census, first at Mount Sinai and later in the land of Moab, 
where he took a census of the people. These people that God had led out of Egypt and led through the wilderness. In fact, this book of Numbers records this 40 year journey in the wilderness. But the people were often fearful. They were often discouraged. But through it all, through it all, God was still faithful. Go back just a little bit to this 13th chapter. And you realize that the children of Israel, the people of God, have made it to the threshold of going into Canaan, what is known as the promised land. The Bible says that God instructs Moses to pick a leader, one from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, to send them into the promised land, to go in and spy out the land, to go see what is there. And for 40 days and for 40 nights, they are living in the promised land. It is a land flowing, as the Bible describes, it is a land flowing with milk and with honey. The Bible tells us that there are grapes there and figs and pomegranates. The land is fruitful. And at the end of 40 days, they make their way back to their people. And the entire congregation of Israel gathers to hear the report. And out of the 12, only Joshua and Caleb tell the truth. The other 10, they say to the entire congregation, the entire collection, the entire gathering of people, they say to them, go back and, and look at it. It is in the 13th chapter, the 33rd verse, where they say there are giants in the land. And they say that we are grasshoppers in our own sight and also in their sight as well. You see, then you make this transition to the 14th chapter. And this is when it becomes even more disturbing for me. Because right there in the first verse, it lets us know that the entire congregation, they begin to cry out. They begin to complain. You see, beloved, this is not a prayer and praise worship service. Minister Tanisha, this is not the people that are gathering together to be in a posture of prayer and a posture of praise. No, they gather together for an all night pity party, crying out and complaining. It disturbs me because I begin to think about that the Bible doesn't really give us a clear picture, but it does say that all of Israel, all of the congregation, that means every man, every woman, every person, has gathered together and they have received the false report. And by receiving the false report, every man, every woman, every person, every elder, they begin to cry out. They begin to complain. But what disturbs me is that if everybody is there, what about the children? What about the legacy? If Reverend Cindy Rudolph was here, she might say that we need to live the legacy. But I want to put it to you this way. What legacy are we leaving? You see, the people of Israel could be leaving a legacy of faith. But instead, they choose to pass along a legacy of fear. They're crying out. They're complaining. Don't you know the children are watching this? Don't you know that, that the generation that's following is looking to see how they will handle adversity? What kind of message are we sending? What kind of legacy are we leaving? The Israelites say that there are giants in the land. 
and they become afraid. They're fearful, Reverend Greta. They are scared. And because of their own fear, they start complaining amongst themselves. Can you imagine a child looking at this? Can you imagine the next generation looking at this? And they begin to internalize what they see. They internalize what they hear. If mama is afraid and daddy is afraid, then I should be afraid as well. And then, beloved, it gets even worse. Go to the second verse of that 14th chapter and read through to the fourth verse. Mm. It gets even worse. Look at what they say. It would have been better for us to die back in Egypt. It would have been better for us to die back in the wilderness. It would have been better for these bad things to happen to us back then instead of right now. Let me let that sit with you for a minute. My Lord, my Lord. Thank you. Let me let you sit with that just for a moment. It would have been better for us to die back in Egypt, back in the wilderness, than for us to die by the sword and for our wives and for our children to become victims. It would have been better for all of these things to happen beforehand. And then, beloved, it's one thing to complain, but it's something else. When you take what's in your mind and you say the words out loud, they say, let us go back to Egypt. It's one thing to complain, but now they want to go back to the place that they had left. You see, beloved, something happens in this moment. Something begins to turn. Even while they say there are giants in the land, they're still concerned about going back to Egypt. For some of us, that might be cold word. Some people might say that in the real world, another way of saying it is let's make America great again. Wow. Some people might say you need to stay in your place. Some people might say don't speak until you're spoken to. They want to go back to Egypt. And I realized, beloved, that they have got some issues. Some of the issues they have are the issues that we have. There are still giants in the land. But before they can face the giants that are still in the land, they've got to deal with the giants that are inside of them. Amen. Amen. Understand that they lived in a system of bondage, lived in a system of slavery, lived in a system that was designed to dismantle them, in a system that was designed to break their spirit. They have now let this, this, this dismantling giant rise up inside of them. So they cannot even see their future. They are stuck in their past. They wrestle with this. We wrestle with this. 
You have to understand that because they have been in such a, a debilitating state, they can't even see the promises of God. All they can see is that there are giants in the land. My Lord. But because of that, because of that, they can't even acknowledge the giants that are inside of them. My God. Something has to shift. And the Reverend Dr. Gary Simpson, he started to mess me up with a sermon that he preached last week. I was listening to it and I reached out to him because he said, you know, what one of the issues that we, we've got to make a shift in is that we talk about Black History Month. He said, maybe we need to start talking about Black Future Month. <laughs> in other words, it's one thing to know your history. It's something else to be stuck in your history. Amen. We've got to be able to take our history and believe and move forward to the next thing. Yes. In other words, family, let me put it to you this way. We are living in the wilderness right now. This COVID experience has put us in a wilderness. And sometimes people say, when are we going to go back into the sanctuary? I understand what you mean, but it's the words. Because some people want to go back to how it was. Hmm. Some people want to go back to the way things were. Mm. Some people have a selective memory of history. That's right. But if God is going to work on us in the wilderness, God is also saying, I've got some promises. But you on the other side of the wilderness. Amen. God is saying, I'm trying Amen. to take you somewhere. Yes. I'm trying to show you something. Yes. Look, if I love you like this, look, I know you're worth saving, but God says you're also worth blessing. Yes. God says, I'm not just going to save you. I want to bless you. God says, yes, I'm going to pull you out of Egypt. Yes, I'm going to pull you through the wilderness. But God is also saying, it's a blessing. Don't go back to Egypt. Go forward. Amen. I tell you something begins to happen. And I get excited in the text. Look at what starts to happen. Thank God for Joshua. Thank God for Caleb. Because they not like the other Israelites. Their DNA is different. And let me say this. Sometimes it takes a giant in the land for you to believe who God is. Yes. Sometimes it takes a giant in front of you for you to start to call out to God. Sometimes it is that giant that makes you say, wait a minute, I can't deal with this. And if you call out to God, thanks be to God. But that's not what the Israelites do. Thanks be to God for Joshua and for Caleb. Can I just walk through this ninth verse just a little bit? Look at what the Bible says. It says only do not rebel against God and do not fear the people in the land. Did you catch it or did you miss it? Let me give it to you again. Do not rebel against God, nor should you fear the people in the land. Amen. I started to get it. I think it's starting to hit home. But let me make it plain in case you missed it. Here's what I love about Joshua. Here's what I love about Caleb. When they speak, here's what they say. Don't rebel against God and don't fear the people in the land. Here's the good news. They don't call the people in the land giants. Amen. If Hallelujah. God's not going to call them giants, why should Joshua and Caleb call them giants? Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, they say they just people. How many times 
do we take a situation and make that situation bigger than what it should be? Right. Mm -hmm. How many times? How many times, beloved, do we start naming small situations as giants? Yes, man. How many times do we allow a giant to live in our land? My Lord. Because we call them giants. Yes. Not because God does. Right. Thanks be to God for Joshua. Thanks be to God for Caleb. We all need a Joshua and a Caleb. Somebody that's going to say, I'm not calling them giants. Hmm. God is bigger. Amen. Hallelujah. God is stronger. Oh, yes. God is more powerful. Yes, he yes, is. God. I'm making the small things bigger than what they need to be. Amen. God says there's some promises mm -hmm. for you in the land. Mm -hmm. yep. God's promises ought to be met with a yes and an amen. Amen. Yes, God, I know it's there. Amen, God. I know you can do it. Amen. Joshua and Caleb said, don't turn on God. Don't worry about those people over there. And then they go on. In, in the New King James, it says, look at here. Don't rebel against God. Nor worry about or fear of or fear the people in the land. But then I love this next part. It says, because for they are our bread. Did you catch it? You see, Joshua and Caleb, they not running around scared like the other Israelites. What they want to know, here's the question in the text. Joshua and Caleb wants to know, they want to know what's on the menu. Hmm. Well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can make this link. See, for Joshua and Caleb, the Bible says they say that, that, that these inhabitants in the promised land, they are our brain. See, let me put it to you this way. Uh, look, you all know I've got young children. I got a 12-year-old and a 6-year-old. Sometimes life gets real simple. Real simple meaning that if we go through the McDonald's drive through and get a happy meal, all is right with the world. I tell you what, my baby girl, look, if she gets a four-piece nugget with some fries and a drink, she's happy. A happy meal. But look at here. I'm a little bit older than a six-year-old. I've seen God slay some pharaohs in my life. I've seen God part some waters on my journey. Amen. I've seen God show up in the midst of my wilderness. Talk about it. I've seen God make a way out of no way. I thank God today. I thank God because every time God slayed a giant, God was showing me that God is still in control. So look at here. I don't really eat food at McDonald's. I'm not driving through to get myself a happy meal. Since I've seen some things, that food doesn't get it done for me. I want to go someplace where I can sit down and I can enjoy a good meal. I want to go someplace. I need to pick a restaurant. I don't know. I'll come up with this just for today. I want to go sit down. Why don't you come with me and sit down at a restaurant called Manor at the table? I want you to go to God's restaurant where God is the sole supplier. And God lays out the menu. You know how this thing works. You go inside a red lobster. They give you the menu. Everything is on the menu. It's seafood related. Because it is a seafood restaurant. I want you to go. The men are on the table. And when you walk in, ask the, the maitre d'. I'm talking about a Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost for a menu. And what's on the menu? Giants. <laughs> Hallelujah. Giants are on the menu. Oh, yes. Yeah. See the God. 
There are giants on the menu. Look at here. You remember Bubba Gump in, in the movie? Look, he said, I got barbecue shrimp. I got fried shrimp. I got sauteed shrimp. Mm. But I want you to know, when you are eating at God's restaurant, all right, there's Pastor. giants mm. on the menu. And they got all kinds of names. Past mistakes on the menu. Depression on the menu. Mm. Past hurts on the menu. On, Anxiety attack mm. on the menu. Death on the menu. Disease. Yeah. On the menu, white supremacy on the menu, racism on the menu, sexism on the menu. If they are menu, God says that these giants are about to be consumed. And look at God with his good God self. <laughs> the bill comes to your table. So look at here. Your money's not good here. Look at here. There's somebody over there sitting in the corner, the manager of the establishment. His name is Jesus. And he said, I picked it up the tab. Jesus said, I paid it all. The money's not good here. But what I want is your praise. What I want is your worship. Yeah. What I want is your thank you. Everybody needs. Or Joshua, everybody needs a tailor. Come on in, the manna on the table. Come on in and get your blessing. God says, eat until you're full, until you're warm. No more. Come hallelujah. on in to God's restaurant. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thing. Just one more thing. Look at what Joshua and Caleb say about these giants. They say, look here, the giants are our bread. For their protection has left them. The Lord is with us. Yes, yes, Lord. Do not fear them. Let me put it to you another way. Don't worry about that other stuff because the Lord is with you. Yes. It'd be one thing if God wasn't with you to go on and be scared. But, but if the Lord is with you, you don't have to fear the people in the land. Amen. And if the Lord is with you, then God removes their protection. And God doesn't put that protection up on the shelf. God says, I'm going to protect my people. Yes. My people who are called by my name. Oh, yes. My people who have humbled themselves before me. Yes. My people who have prayed. God yes. says, I'm going to protect my people. Let me put it to you like this. Because this is where I got excited. I believe what God is saying to us. I believe what Joshua and Caleb were saying to the people. What I believe is this. That God is saying, don't waste a good battle. Mm. My Lord. Why waste a good battle? You see, because when you waste a good battle, you waste a good praise. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. When you waste a good battle, you're wasting a good praise. Oh, hallelujah. I look back over my life. And I think about the most difficult moments. When I think about when things were really, really hard, those moments that I wanted to give up, those moments where I felt I wasn't deserving of God's grace. God showed up right on time. And God said, look at here. I'm the only one that can distribute grace. You don't have to go through Congress. You don't have to go through the executive house. 
You don't have to go through the governor's mansion. You don't have to go through your local officials. God said, I distribute grace and I distribute mercy. God said, watch me work. And every single time God shows up, every single time God shows out. And I got to tell you this. I want to tell you this. I gotta share this. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the battle's not mine, but it's the Lord's. Hallelujah. I'm so glad <laughs> I deal with the issues in my life. Because God dealt with it. I'm gonna praise him. Send us into the battle. God has already given you the victory. Instead of looking for failure. Stop worshiping in faith. Instead of having a pity party, stop praying and praising God. Give God the glory. Don't waste a good battle because you've already got the victory. Amen. Instead of singing the song, let the song run and write for every mountain, not to get down. For every giant, you brought me over. For every child, you see me through. Every, for every person, hallelujah, I give you praise, God. I give you a yes. I give you an amen. I give you a hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory for every giant. They can become my stepping stone. For every giant, they become my walking path. For every giant, they become my praise report. I give God praise. God is worthy to be praised. Don't stop shouting. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop praising. Don't you know that every slain giant is another reason to lift your praise. I give them praise today. I don't care if there's giants in the land. God is taking the giants that are trying to hold me down and replace me. Replace it with the best giant in the world. His name. You don't know his name. His name. You don't know his name. His name is above every name. And every knee shall bow. Every confess his name is Jesus. Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You see the enemy come. Hallelujah. Anyhow, when the bills seem high, hallelujah. Anyhow, when the doctor's report is bad, hallelujah. Anyhow, when your kids are out of control, hallelujah. Anyhow, when it seems like life has got you on the rocks, hallelujah. Anyhow, because God. It's going to deal with the people, with the issues, with the problems in the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you for you, your Father. word. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. I don't know where you are. I don't completely know what you're dealing with. Mm. But I can tell you this, I'm not going back to Egypt. That's right. Now amen. The blessings are in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Amen. I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, can, I can tell you this. My DNA is different. Hallelujah. I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to call anybody a giant in my life anymore. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. When I serve a giant slayer, hey. yes. When I serve a God who's not intimidated by the issues I face, yes. Mm -hmm. When that God is with me and that God is with you, beloved, mm. yes. There's no reason to fear. Right. Wherever you may be, maybe you thought you were facing giants. Mm. I didn't preach about giants today. I preached about God. Yes. That God 
will deal with whatever it is you got to go through. And let me and let me say this. That doesn't mean that things are going to be easy. It doesn't mean that things are going to work out in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. What it means is that God will work it out. It may take some time. That's not on you. That's on God. God knows what God is doing, when God is doing it, and how God is going to do it. Leave that stuff to God. Just keep your focus on him. Amen. If you have not made the most important decision, that is to choose Jesus to be Lord of your life. We invite you. We invite you right now to say yes. You can put a message in the chat and say, yeah, I'm done with giants. That's what, that's what you need to do. Put a message in the chat and say, I'm done with giants. And somebody will respond to you. Maybe you don't have a place you can call your church family. You, beloved, can be a part of the Carter community family. You can be a part of our virtual family. And whenever God says, go back into the sanctuary, you can be a part of our family virtually, in person. It doesn't matter. Look, just be in a place that's going to give God everything they got. If that's you, you can send an email to Carter Community AME at gmail.com. You can put a message in the chat. And in the message, just say, yeah, yeah, I'm done with giants. And I will respond. One of our ministers will respond. Somebody will get back to you. You can say yes and become a part of this feeling this right now somebody right now you're you're wrestling and the giant is saying no don't do it a giant is trying to tell you don't put it in the chat the giant is saying don't put your stuff out there look don't listen to the giant listen to that whisper of god and it's saying i got this that's what i love about god he doesn't have to yell it i got this mm -hmm. He ain't got to yell. I'm yelling. He ain't got to. I got this. Yes. God is saying that to somebody right now. I got this. Hallelujah. Here's your menu. Eat what you want. I got this. Mm -hmm. Just let us know. Grace is loving and wonderful, God. I pray for everyone underneath the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that, that, that whatever giants they thought they were facing, that you would let them know that they can look to the hills from which cometh their help. Their help comes from you. I pray, God, that this word will speak and resonate in a way that will give you the glory. It's not about me. It's not about Carter community. It's about you getting the glory. So have your way, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Bless, bless this person right now with the courage, the courage, God, to denounce anything that's going to keep them from you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Wherever you may be, let us together say amen. 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 Beloved, it's time for us to share in our Holy Communion. I'll give you a second to grab your communion. We give God praise for this moment. If you have your bread or your wafer in your hand, I invite you to lift it unto the Lord. Have your cup in the other hand, lift it unto the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and wonderful God, we thank you. Yes, thank Lord. you, God, for watching over us. Thank you, God, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for going to the cross for all of us. We bless you now and ask, oh God, that you would certainly bless these elements, Lord God, that remind us of, of that last supper that you had. We pray, God, your blessing, God, for your glory. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night when our Lord, our Savior, was betrayed, he sat with his disciples. He took bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, for this is my body, which has been broken for you. In fact, broken for many. As often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. Together, let us eat.
and I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink, for this is my blood which has been shed for you for the remission of sins. As often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ, more perfect than the blood of Abel, because it takes away the sins of the world. Let us drink. And I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we give God praise for you, 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 and you. And if you don't mind, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go get something, some tea with honey or something, because I still want to shout some more. I tell you, God is such a great and awesome God. But I thank you that you thought enough of God and of us to be here with us today. Once again, you see on your screen the many ways that you can give to the ministry. We thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and certainly for what you will do. We absolutely bless your name. And we bless God's name in particular. We bless God for you and for your faithfulness. So listen, beloved, God willing, we will see you next week. Don't forget next Sunday, we'll be gathering at five o'clock uh, to hear a little bit of comedy, hear a little, hear a lot of gospel music. So we just invite you to share a little bit of your February 14th with us. Oh yeah, I forgot. All, and, and I thank God for this. I just remembered um, because somebody out there is wondering, so I got to keep the tradition alive. I want you to know that I spoke with Brother Timothy Jones. Amen. I spoke with Brother Timothy Jones. You all know, those who are members of Carter Community, you know. Every year I check in with Brother Timothy Jones to see who he is picking for the Super Bowl. Now, I've been in Carter Community now. Uh, we've been there 10 years. Last year was the first year he got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm asking you, who are you going to pick? Are you picking Tampa Bay or are you picking Kansas City? And Brother Jones said he's going with Kansas City. Amen. So look at here. We, we, are, we are on a new 10. He got the first nine wrong and then got it right. <laughs> So I hope he's so, so, so if he pick Kansas City, you might want to go. <laughs> the other way. But listen here. Enjoy. If you're going to watch the game, enjoy the game. But most of all, enjoy your family. Most of all, enjoy Jesus Christ. Enjoy being with Christ. God Amen. Bless you all. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. And God willing, we'll see you again next week. Brother Coleman, my brother, come on and bring us home. All right, God bless everybody. Thank you for that word. Thank you for the great work that you're doing. Hallelujah. God is so good. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. Why I'm on this teacher's journey. I want Jesus to walk.
hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Why I won't need teacher's journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, nobody but you, Lord, nobody but you, Lord, nobody but you, why won't this Jesus Thank you, God. Just a little bit of something for Black History Month. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Bless, God. bless everybody. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. We love all bless of you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you, family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor, do you want Minister Tanisha to read the uh, scriptures for next week? I'm going to do it. Unless you have a burning desire. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. You know what? I'm, not, I'm done messing with you. I, I, hey. couldn't, even, I couldn't even answer at first. Hey. Lady was like, yes. Nope. Background. Turn on my Re camera. Reverend Greta 